There are some testimonies that you don't in any way share with anyone. Not because you don't want to, but because you can't see through the heart of anyone to see if they truly are happy for and with you, or they're just pretending and yet planning evil against you. Since you don't know what the heart of others contains, submit to God, and He shall dissect you on who to share your testimony with, because one of the reasons why we share testimony is so someone will be blessed and be ministered to through our words of testimonies. Even in the body of Christ, the church, many are afraid of sharing the goodness of the Lord over their lives because instead of being a source of solace and union, the church has become a den of evil things and a house for gossiping. In the church today, many things are going on. Some conspire against their fellow brother or sister in the Lord. Not just in the church, but even at home, in our various communities, our places of work, our group of friends, and so many places to mention, but a few. People go against themselves, planning evil against themselves. Nobody is happy with the achievements and success of the other. Unlike before when brethren stand in the gap for each other, they join in celebration and mourning of each other. When one was sad, the rest joins and consoles the person. So also when one was happy, they join and jubilee with each other. No wonder Job had enough strength to be talking and making some inspirational talks and conversations even in his most trying and painful moments because he had friends who sat and believed with him all through. The Bible said they sat and did not utter a word for three days due to the kind of situation they found him in. If it were to be our world today, he would have hidden and not allow anyone to see him, because they will make it the talk of the town and the topic of laughter and mockery. This does not mean there are no more good people whom you can trust with your secrets. However, the point I am making is for you to be careful and make sure to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Jonathan was a good friend to David. He made sure to help him in times he needed him. He never boasted to David, and neither did he even take side with his father to face and or pursue David. He didn't mind having arguments with his father over that. How do you think David was able to connect with Jonathan so deeply like that? David was very close to God. He made sure to have effective communication with him. Now, since God is the only one who plans the end from the beginning and also sees through the hearts and minds of people, he made Jonathan available to be there, stand and support his servant David in the aforeplanned tribulation he was bound to face. So also it is for you brethren, do not just trust people on your own accord, because you don't know and cannot see what other people have in mind for you or against you. That is why there is a need for you to ensure an active relationship exists between you and the Father, so you will know who to tell and who not to tell your testimony. It is no longer a new thing in our world today that the Father conspired against His Son, a son going against his father. A friend betrays another friend or exposing important information about their sisters or their fellow brothers. A church member conspired with the other to harm, rob, or even kill their fellow church member, all because of the love of money and self. Everyone no longer bears the pain and secrets of the other. Instead, we all seek the downfall of others. You share a testimony with someone thinking in your heart, he or she is your brother, sister, church member, co-worker, or even our so-called counselors and church elders. Instead of them using that testimony in such a way that it will showcase the goodness and awesome power of God, they use it to go against you. Some even blackmail you all because of what? Because their love for God has waxed cold. Yes. The Bible says that if we claim we love Him and yet we don't love our brothers and sisters, 
then we lie, and the love of the fathers is not in us. Many no longer put this principle at work. Instead, they have allowed the love for luxury and the things of this world to make them go astray, to the extent some will do anything at all. By the time brother A gives a testimony, these people use that against that person to gain one thing or the other, or even plot something evil against that brother. When you share your testimony with the right person, it is used to propagate and expand the kingdom of God. This is because of testimonies of the great and mighty power of the Lord. The Bible said, There are many waiting for the manifestation of the sons of men. You are a son of man because you have accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have acknowledged His Lordship so that He makes you know when and who to tell your testimony to, and you will be a great influence for Christ and His kingdom at last. Be very careful whom you share your testimony with. Don't forget your best friend has a best friend, and that best friend has another best friend. That is why, in all we do, let us seek the indulgence of the Lord. Even when we make friends, be careful to let the Holy Spirit do the choosing for you, so you get the right friends. You can't choose the family you come from, but you can pray to God for direction on what testimony to share and to whom you should share it. Little wonder many in the world living and passing through a lot or have passed through a lot find it hard to share their testimonies because they don't know who is listening and how they will react to the testimony or what they say. No one wants to help another, not because they don't want to help, but because they might have seen or heard where someone who gave a harmless help was attacked either physically or spiritually. Samson made a mistake in his life by sharing his testimony, the source of his power and strength, with Delilah. She used it to come against him and conquer him. For what? For a token of money, the Philistines promised her. There are now existing many Delilahs in our generation today, to the extent that many are dying all because they are scared of sharing their testimonies. After all, the world is full of evil. To the extent that people now no longer see anything bad in doing evil. Rather, they coined a friendly name for evil and give excuses for their ill behavior. No one is willing to be dedicated and has a great love for their fellow humans. Little wonder God he is able and capable to guide and direct you on who you tell your testimony. Nothing is too small for him to handle. The Bible advised us to be wise as serpents in whatever we do. It also said that the wisdom of men is foolishness to him. You can't know more than him. He knows all and the best. Therefore, let him be your guide and director, even in your daily activities and in your day-to-day -day relationship with your fellow humans. The Bible trusts in the Lord with all your strength in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the word of god says in all your ways therefore in your bid to know who you share your testimony also know that you can't be careful on your own and by your understanding make sure to have a proper and active relationship with god so he directs you on who you bless with your testimony and who not to share it with do not let their outward appearance and behavior deceive you into being so open, thereby allowing your emotions and flesh to decide for you instead of being submissive to the Holy Spirit. Samuel nearly got confused about who to anoint as king due to how handsome the brothers were. It took God's intervention, he would have announced the wrong person for Israel. May God help in our daily lives. God bless you.